Hi, and welcome back once again to After Dinner Conversation. After Dinner Conversation is a website and podcasts that uh, promote critical thinking and socializing with your friends and talking about ethical things. Um, we are once again today in La Gatara. La Gatara. Uh, finally, I'm getting it right. Uh, where they have cats for adoption. I was going to say yes. purchase because you do have to. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is you, a you do have to pay for them. They don't just they don't just give you the cats. Yes. It's an adoption fee, though. Come here, kid. It yes. is not. It is not. <laughs> I got this cat right here. Very cute kitty. It's not cat trafficking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's not cat trafficking. That would be that would be terrible. Like this that might make here. a good story. Uh, the cat trafficker. <laughs> um, so yes. So uh, we'll continue to do this. Uh, if you enjoy it, please like <laughs> or share. As our cat goes right in our camera, all right, you're gonna get you're gonna get demoted, kitten. Uh, please like or share these. Feel free to submit them. Uh, you can buy these ebooks uh, wherever ebooks are sold, uh, Amazon, whatever, all the places that they go. Uh, so you can read along with us. I am your co-host Colby. I'm here with Jeremy. Uh, Hi, I'm Jeremy. And oh, so you remember to say talk this time as opposed <laughs> to just wait. Just wait. <laughs> it's the worst podcast voice ever. And Jessica, who's going to be joining us for the Hello. next bunch of episodes. Uh, Ashley is on what we call sabbatical. What's she doing? She's doing she triathlon a, stuff. She needs a break. She needs a break from Jeremy and I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she'll be back, I'm sure, to taunt us incessantly. So uh, our story, <laughs> this, God, it's already that kind of day. Uh, so our story, Pretty Pragmatism by Janine McBriarty. McBriarty? McBriarty. We're going to go with that. Uh is our first story. And I think, Jeremy, you got yeah. a story summary and you wrote your story summary. I wrote this a story time. summary this time. What? Way to, I was disappointed with our previous way story. Way to bring summary. your A game right. there, man. So, nice. Let's hear it. So, our story opens with Senator Sal Boudini talking to a senior staffer, Rob, about the merits of hiring a press se secretary based on her looks and introducing a bill proposing compulsory national service. You got to talk slower, dude. I'm barely okay. following that. Sal and Rob bounce between these seemingly unrelated topics as they prepare Sal for an appearance before the Senate Ethics Committee. Apparently, the idea of requiring two years of public service... Are you going to read all that? Yeah. Dude. Let, let him read right, it. I'll, I'll let him read it. That's a <laughs> lot, dude. That's a lot. So apparently, the idea hey, of requiring... Hey, manager. Sorry. Back off. All right, sorry. Two years of public service in the national parks isn't sitting well with the ex Ethics Committee because it was founded by an Italian fascist and was the basis for Germany's uh, Hitler Jung Jugend or Nazi Youth Party. Sal argues that rich people send their kids to summer camps. Why can't poor people do the same? But Rob counters that it's not the idea that's bad, but the source of the idea that's bad. Rob ends a conversation with advice to not make Senator Whitcomb, presumably the committee chair, mad at Sal since she already thinks he's a pig. The next scene opens at the end of Sal's chewing out by the committee where they have basically accused him of proposing child servitude or prison indoctrination camps, ending with Whitcomb questioning if Sal were lazy, stupid, a fascist, or all three. Uh, nonplussed, Sal spends the next few paragraphs arguing that all good policies spring from other people's earlier good ideas, mixing examples from fascists and non-fascists alike. This is the crux of the story, can good ideas come from discredited sources? And secondarily, does this matter more in politics where everything can be used against you in the election cycle? Uh, the scene ends with an unappeased Whitcomb recommending censure. In the final scene, we see Sal pondering the potential implications of the committee's decision. Uh, next, a note from Rob that he's fired Roxy, the aforementioned press secretary, prompting thoughts of retirement for Sal. Rob reappears then with news that due to a loss of votes, Senator Whitcomb is willing to drop the censure if he'll vote for her budget bill. Uh, elated, Sal and Rob celebrate his win, ending with the revelation that Sal had dumped Whitcomb for Roxy, tying our plot points together and adding additional motive for Sal's proposed censure. Story ends with Sal adding to his Washington memoir, equating the strength of good ideas with the strength of the writer of those ideas. Wow, that that's is an a lot. excellent. I think when you told when story. you told me that took you a half an hour to write, I was like, "How could it take you a half an hour to write a summary?" <laughs> and now, because it's a summary, I totally it's a summary. get. Yeah, I don't. When it's my turn to summarize, <laughs> you need to have lower expectations. <laughs> Much like you're gonna get, like you're gonna get, like it's like Jaws in space. Nice. Like that's what you're gonna get from that's me. your summary. That's Alien, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so in can, can you wait? Can, so who's the uh, the old boat pilot? Uh, I don't know <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. I'm not sure. No, she can't. I don't know, That's man. A different topic. Anyways, uh, okay, so basically, it's about a senator who tries to create 
mandatory two year youth camps. Yeah, like two year service things. Right. Okay. And, it, and it's unclear whether it's. Um, and he stole the. Did he? Did he intentionally steal the idea from the Nazi party, or did he find out later? After he came up with the idea of like, oh yeah, that's what the Nazi party did. It's unclear. I I think it was just an idea. Yeah, it's unclear whether he stole the idea or took the idea from earlier writings or um, came up with it on its own. Then it just happens to match earlier right, earlier good ideas. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 interesting. So 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 Jessica and I were talking about this in the way in that she does a Girl Scout troop. Is it? I do. Yeah. Girl Scout troop. Uh, and one of the things that Run people I think that this story reminded me of that people don't really know. See, even when I move my bag, the cat goes to my bag to vomit <laughs> on it. Uh, was that actually the Boy Scouts of America? Uh, are lo and behold right around Absolutely. World War II because they are a response to Hitler's youth. Uh, right, and there things. was there, was there were some kids. originally when I was uh, doing research on this one. There was originally issues with the Boy Scout Party at the same time because of that right. connection. Right. Yeah, and so it's not like this is unprecedented. Like the Boy Scouts is a version of. I mean, it's even yeah, is even a version of what what they were doing in World War II. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. At any rate, so I'm curious. Uh, what did you What did you think, Jessica? Welcome to the show, by the way. Well, thank you, Colby. I <laughs> You're a rock star. <laughs> Flo, we flew you in special. You did fly me in special. Like, like Brie. Right. Or... I was going to say like a, like a cleaner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like Jean Renault. Yeah. Yeah. Here with I your have, trench coat. I have here. to come Bag clean acid. up this mess. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, you know, I, my, I have a former life in politics. Yeah. So I have a lot of experience dealing with, you know, how... Oh, that's right. You worked on, uh, like, people's database Campaigns. things or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I worked, yeah. I worked. yep, in, in, in for a company that did database software for campaigns. Okay. And so I worked with a lot of politicians, and, and you know, spin is a big part of that, you know. Yeah. Uh, contributions and who's contributing and how they're going to spin that is a big part of, you know, do the ends justify the means kind of thing. And I yeah. think that story is a little bit up at the heart of that, especially when we have... Um, Whitcomb, the the senator who is um, putting the censure um, on Senator Sal, is you know at the end she is asking for a vote. She is basically saying, "I will step aside and um, I I will not uh, censure you on something that I think is completely wrong as long as I get." what I want a in vote the for end. my constituents. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it's still horse trading. It's still horse trading. It's also, you know, I, and and although there is a romantic relationship that complicates the story as well, I also think it's a very interesting, like my ethics are very strong until I need a vote to pass my bill. And then and then there's always the question like, well, but is a censure worth, you know, people's jobs? Like how do you how do you value those those ideas? Um, so I think it's I think it's an interesting story in that way. I struggle a lot with this subject because, especially being a writer, we have lots of artists, especially in the last ten years, whose art has been um, brought into question because of sexual harassment or because of uh, dropping, pedophilia, dropping like flies. Right, yeah, right. And so true. the question always comes up: is like, does do, does the actions um, negate the art? Yeah. And I think a lot of the times when there's a good idea, you know, does the source of it negate the good ideaness of it? Um, and I think that sometimes it absolutely does. I think one of the things this this story reminds me of is um, in politics when there is a quote unquote good idea, right? But oh, it was associated with something bad or someone bad. Um, a lot of times we don't take it out of the oh it was this person's idea and then talk about like how did that you know uh, f for example in the camps nazi youth camps aren't a good idea i don't i don't care <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, when you put it that way right. you can't no. call it a nazi youth camp you have to call it like a <laughs> right, like a uh, like a pose like a world war pre-world war ii <laughs> uh exercise facility you've right. got to rename it it's right, called but, branding but even in the rebranding we don't carry the four right so c mandatory youth camps are great if you're completely able-bodied you're not homosexual you're not yeah. introverted you're not uh, right all, all these all these things all these things are great ideas until you <clears throat> until you carry the idea 
farther down. And then it becomes, it, yes, the big reveal happens. So yes, it's what a great idea. So, so, <laughs> I, so, so I feel like there are two things that you're talking about there. One is, can a good idea come from a bad source? And number two, in this story, was having these camps even a good idea? Yes. And it sounds like you're for sure on the, like, having mandatory camps is not a good idea. Correct. And I think that's, that I, I, I don't, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I, although I do think mandatory service is not necessarily a bad idea. Not necessarily idea. bad. And the whole idea from Sal's point of view is, again, it's, it's getting people out in the national parks to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, maintenance of the parks. Mm -hmm not necessarily a youth camp. Right. But it depends on how you spin that and really what is the goal of the bill. Is it to national service where people are doing things for the, the common good? Like they're free labor for the government, for the, Basically. For the common good. Right. Well, and so... Maybe that's what he should have called it. Free labor for the <laughs> government, for, for the, the common, common good. good. <laughs> FCCP, whatever, CA, uh, CG. I feel like no, no party would object at all to that. Question. What about, does it bug you? Like, what oh, wait, you, wait, okay, wait, sorry. I want, yeah, okay, but okay. I want to add one thing. It's not that I think that this is a bad idea, although I do think it's a terrible idea. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, what I'm saying though, is that a lot of times we don't learn from our history. So f looking at the Nazi camps and, and Sal does in the, in the uh -huh. story, he goes and he looks at those before and after pictures, right? Mm. Of those weakling kids and then like a yeah. six pack, right? And why are there three kids less? What weird. <laughs> right. We started weird. with 20 kids in the camp. We finished with 17. Right. It's and so I think odd. that's where I think we get lost is a lot of times we'll say, oh, it's a good idea no matter what the, where it came from, but we don't explore the bad idea part of it yeah. um, in, right. in the historical context. Like, yeah, these were a bad idea, and why? And how could that play out in our, our version of this idea? Really, and, and that's the important part of, or what should be the important part of this discussion is, you know, what are the merits of the idea, good and bad, right. as opposed to where it came from, right. which is, which which is a logical fallacy anyways. Yeah, which is what the, all the, the story and all the politics is related on where the idea came yes. from. There's no discussion at all of but, whether it's actually a good idea. Right. Right. Well, and I think, I mean, that's just human nature, right? Like every yeah. idea Colby comes up with, I'm immediately going to say is a bad idea. Terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> you got to argue with me that it's and a good idea. You still right. got, got on a plane. And still I got, <laughs> I got on a plane, plane to come here. So, so okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tangent for half a tangent for a second. Okay. So years ago, a friend of mine uh, was a, I suppose they still are, an economist. Uh and, and and got a PhD in economy and came here as a German guy, blah, 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 whole thing. Uh, and I asked him, I was like, look, I've never understood, like, so in the middle of the Great Depression, a worldwide Great Depression in the 1930s, the United States is a wreck, Europe is a wreck, every place is a wreck. Like, Hitler somehow, like, creates economic policies that creates a massive, not just military, but recovered economy surrounded by shattered economies, including the United States. Right. And the only thing that gets the United States out of the Great Depression is, a, is the government spending on war efforts to fight Germany and fight Japan. And I'm like, surely... There's uh, a lesson in here. Yeah, like a lesson besides the fact of like, don't be horrible, but there must be some economic lesson of like, how do you bootstrap your own country out of a worldwide depression when there's nobody in the world to sell to? Right, because everyone is in bad shape, and so I asked this German economist guy that was staying with me at the time, like, so, like, how is that studied? He was like, we don't, and I'm like, what do you mean you don't? He's like, nobody studied. Like, it would be you it would be it would be academic suicide to study something that you know the Germ that the Hitler Germany did to understand why it was good. He's like, so we just don't because there's so much bad because there's so it. much bad about it. That, so I'm like, so you don't even know how they did. He's like, well, we roughly know. I'm like, did anyone get a PhD in figuring it out? And he's like, no, probably not. Well, and oh, to be fair, to be fair. I mean, he was German. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think that there's also, you know, the human instinct to. Um, that wretch instinct. Well, I was going to say to take something half cocked and not understood and run with it as a platform is so oh, yeah. utterly scary. Yeah. I absolutely and common. I absolutely wouldn't study it because some jerk is going to pick that up and say, "Hey, the way to economic recovery is to yeah. repress and genocide 
a bunch of people. And and some politician is going to be like, yeah, it's not such a bad idea. You can get on board with that because right. it keeps us right. in power. This is how you go from Darwin to eugenics. Right, exactly. Yeah. This is exactly how you go from Darwin to eugenics. Yeah. Yeah. That's so totally fair. I think that that's fair. If I was if I was Germany, I'd be like, guys, just shut it down. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. I, whatever idea might have been good, I'm, I don't even care. I don't want anybody rehabilitating this movement. Um, of course, that did not work. It's yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, you sent your kin kid to kindergarten. Let's just be clear. <laughs> well, my kid goes to a German bilingual school, so <laughs> your political career is over. <laughs> I, was never, never gonna, I was never going to get in politics never. anyway. I'm a horrible, hor horrible person. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy, let me ask you a question. So, one of the things that comes up is a guy goes through a listing of like good ideas from other sources. C mm -hmm. Certainly. Sure. Uh, uh, I think he talks about the autobahn, and he talks about. Right. Um, you know, a couple other ones. Uh, there was some that he didn't even mention. Um, like the little BMW symbol is like a helicopter, or is like a, as a as a propeller because they made warplanes for Germany. Right. Uh, I think it's BMW or Mercedes, Mercedes. whichever. That yeah, Mercedes. yeah. Uh, do you think it's okay to sort of take ideas that are either military ideas or war ideas, or I mean, or all the sort of research that came out of like human. Um, uh, human limitations that were done on sort of, uh, you know, uh, concentration camp people. Like that's right. still it's still data. Do you it's think still you throw valid it away? Data. He talks uh, about the rocket launch. Wait, wait, talks wait. About the rocket How do we know too. it's valid data? Right, we don't. Well, we, we don't. We just know it's data. It's data. Yeah. We don't know that it's valid or not. That's true. Uh, but the example they use in the story is sort of the rocket uh, technology, right? Like, right. like uh, I want to be clear, there was an American who did the rocketry first, but German continued that from his work. And then they, we basically gave them all a free pass and was like, look, if you'll come to America, we'll take, we'll just say you were just like doing Nazi work and you didn't have a right, choice. Right, but you weren't. Right, and now we have a rocket program. Like, does that, is, do, do you just sort of blank that to keep a clean moral slate? Or are you okay, like, like, yeah, you were uh, bad, but you're that's bad and useful. Ethically questionable, and you know the government is typically not very good at that, and th they will just blanketly uh, allow SS scientists to come to the U.S. and work in the atomic program and the rocket programs, yeah. uh, even though they did bad things. And I think, uh, although I think it's definitely more prevalent in, in government, I do think that's true for a lot of sectors. Um, the mm. guy who invented um, cardiac catheters, you know, that the right. one that goes up the vein and into the heart, oh. he did it on himself first. What? Yeah, his name is Vern, Werner Fossman. That's some like Fossman. Frankenstein stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, he got fired for it. Yeah, um, and then he got a Nobel you, Prize for it, probably. He, he did, he did get a Nobel <laughs> Prize for it. Shut the front door. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Imager, for uh, reminding me of this. Um, but he- um, I wonder how many people have gotten a Nobel Prize for something they got fired for. He's gotta be it. No, I'm sure no? there's more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Curie. Uh, but what I was gonna say is that, you know, he did that um, and then he joined the Nazi party. Really? Right. He was, I mean, and and so we as a medical community, of course, are not going to just be like, uh, hey, forget it. Like, we're not going to, cardiac catheter, that's probably not good, right? Because it came from a Nazi. So do you think there's a distinction between sort of medical and scientific uh, sort of separation versus um, political separation? You know, so if you come up with the version of the, the, the what is it, something catheter, the, 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 cardiac, the catheter. cardiac catheter, if you come up with the political theory version of the cardiac catheter, do you chuck that opinion out because it's a different world in politics? Politics and finance and sure. uh, economics. Which you, is you, what say we're yeah, you say yes then. That, well, the, because they're much more a public sector, that, that there is a larger impression and it's much more visible in politics, again, because of the election cycle, mm. everything you do is. But aren't we can kind of glad forth. that scientists don't follow that same rule? Otherwise, we wouldn't have a cardiac catheter. We wouldn't have a rocket program. Right. Right. Um, You're like, I mean, I so if it's good enough for science, why is that not good enough for economics? <laughs> well, okay, but here, here is here is the thing. When like, um, we have to be careful, even in science, right? Because then we start we start saying anything for science. Um, as long as it advances humanity, therefore it's valid. And then we get like Henrietta Lacks and the whole, the woman whose DNA, 
I'm going to mess this up. Sorry, internet. Um, <laughs> Henrietta Lacks, there's a whole book on it. There's a, a really great Radio Lab podcast on it. I think I've heard this, the same one. Her right. DNA, her, she, uh, her cells in her body, she was dying of a disease in uh, a uterine, like a uterine clot or something. And she, her, a sample was taken without consent. Mm -hmm. And it now is the basis of almost all the vaccine science in the world. Henrietta really? Lacks, she's amazing. She yeah. died. Nothing was ever attributed to her. Her family received no financial gain. She was a poor black woman, and she was taken advantage she was. of. Of course she, she was. Let me guess, she was like in Alabama or something. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, again, it's that anything for science. Without mm. Henrietta Lacks, we would not be where we are today medically. However, there are still ethical issues with what they still did. There big ethical issues, and we should have done it right, and instead we did not. Um, and so that always is going to concern me. Yes, we should learn from bad people. Hello, the cats are fighting. There's cat fighting going on. Uh, they're uh, displeased with this line of inquiry. <laughs> I feel like any cat not named Logan is a wasted opportunity. I gotta be honest. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there right now. My nephew is named Logan. Oh. But your nephew isn't a cat. Or Kruger. <laughs> Kruger would work too. Not the park. Anyway, the horror guy. Sorry. So that I think that's a slippery slope. I think that is yes. yeah. um, to say, oh, as long as it's science or medicine, because again, medicine is one of those. How much? How much did we learn from horrible experimentation or the repression of, especially black women mm -hmm. in the United States? It, the whole OBGYN field is just marred with terrible atrocities that we never ever recognize yeah um so i think i think i have a problem with that right but the other side of the basically critical thinking in the scientific process is that you're building on previous work mm -hmm. and so people aren't always i would assume in science looking at who did the work they're just looking at the work reproducing the experiments Correct. or building on that research mm -hmm. and so there's a disconnect between who did the research and the research itself. Yeah. So, so let me just. I don't necessarily disagree, but I'm just going to throw we'll blood in the water. I'll, I'll throw blood in the water here on this one. Like I feel like there's an understanding that when it comes to physics, when it comes to medicine, that truth, until we know better truth, exists. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we know that Newtonian physics is correct until we get Einsteinian physics, and then we know that's correct until we get. And, and truth simply exists. And so I don't know why that that belief of like, well, truth exists, but I'm going to take a pass on these other ideas because I don't like where they came from because I question their motivation in gathering truth. I think probably because the scientific method does exist. As opposed to politics where it's just right. the sausage it, method. Yes. Right. And yeah. it's a lot of PR and it's a lot of spin and that's yeah. a lot of, and it's a lot of um, what was society ready for at the time and where, yeah. what are they not? And I just think, I, I think try to apply that to art, right? Like why didn't, you know, why, right, like, why did Edgar Allan Poe die penniless and alone? Right. Right. Like, why did that happen um, when he was so popular? Right. Later right. on. It, it, yeah. What, yeah. That makes sense. In politics and, and art, truth is a much more fluid. Yeah. And thing. very and very nuanced and, and dependent on a lot of things. I still think that's true for science. I just think we do a better job of sussing it out. Yeah. Um, I like when you were talking about uh, the data for the Holocaust victims and you said valid data and I said, how do we know it's valid? Sure. Right? We try and reproduce it, but we right. can't. We can't. Right. right. So um, so I, I think it goes back to that as well. Hmm. Jeremy, generally, what did you think of the story? Like um, it? Dislike it? Do you find it interesting? It, it was. Yeah, the, it's, it's pretty well written. The. The points that it brings up, I think, are good. Um, I feel like there could have been more research done or research presented in his argument, um, mm. as opposed to the pretty well-known ones that were that were provided. Yeah. Um, and nobody ever talks about the caffeine pills or the speed that they gave all the pilots and the people the, in Germany. Yeah, right. I mean, they were all. I, on actually, meth. I just read a yeah. I just read a yeah. stat a little while ago <laughs> that when they figured out how many meth pills that they were giving out yeah that it worked out to like two a week per soldier like millions hundreds of millions of them were produced yes yeah and we don't really talk about any of that um what about the idea the not necessarily the um 
the go away to camp, but the idea of sort of mandatory um, mandatory service. national service, national service, right? There, and that's not saying you know, that I, it has to be going to like like this guy's idea, right. but you could go and you know whatever uh, via lifeguard or whatever it's, the government thinks they need you for. Exactly, and because the government's running it, it's going to be fraught with problems. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> Right. It'll, I mean, and I have talked way to, to bring some reality yeah. to it. Uh, and I've corruption. To, yes. And, uh, yeah, that's I've true. I've talked Nepotism. to people from Israel where they do go They do through, mandatory yeah. service. Turkey and, also does mandatory right, service. There's a lot of countries where people do, where they are involved with national service. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's, honestly, uh, I was in the army and... It was, there's a lot of... That could have been two years national uh, service, what you were doing, right? Absolutely. Like, you didn't have to. And it was not, it was not a glamorous job, and really there, there's too many people, and it, it was fraught with issues as well, even though it wasn't uh, compulsory. Mm -hmm. mm. So, because it's run by the government. Right. Sure. I mean, I think... Ooh, did well, you guys hear that? There's yeah. a big cat fight. There's a government fight going on over there. I think it's a fight over the litter box, which is yeah. a very yeah. bad scene. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't want to be the one waiting for the porta potty. <laughs> you don't want that world. Get into a fist fight waiting for the porta potty. Uh, yeah, no, I, no, I, I think it's particularly for Jessica and I. I think you're going to find a, a good audience that says like, when government does something, it tends to be bloated and inefficient yeah. and corrupt. Uh, that doesn't. But, but does that mean uh, that it? The, but that does. But does that mean that it's not worth doing? Right. Like, so no, even if you've only got seventy exactly. percent efficiency, right, you it's might still, still get the levy built. Absolutely. And I think you see that a lot of in the Depression era or Roosevelt's programs. There were a lot of good programs that that came about from that. Yeah. That were the same idea, some sort of I national still service see. Even or in, even uh, in Tempe, I, I still once in a while when you walk on a sidewalk, you can see the stamp mm -hmm. in the sidewalk, the CCC yes. stamp or whatever. The, exactly. Like because yeah. literally the 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 sidewalk was built as part of like a work labor program, yeah. but they didn't call it a labor camp. <laughs> that was they knew better. <laughs> Yeah, they knew better. Well, and I, the what you're talking about also was not just for young people coming out of high school. It was for people unemployed who, adults. Right? right, it was an employment program. Right. Um, it was an employment program, which is very different than compulsory service. Yeah, no, that's uh, yeah. It's a, you're right. I I feel like yeah, there's a branding issue with this. Well, sure. I mean, it, it, and not even just a branding issue, but like make compulsory. I I don't know if you met me. But you tell me that you <laughs> want me to do something, my first instinct is to do the opposite. Yeah. So to tell me, like, oh, you have to do this thing for two years. I love the national parks. If you told me I had to work in the national parks for two years, I'd be a jerk about it. Just, even, <laughs> just, just because you told me to. Just because you told me to. Yeah. yeah. I feel like yeah. that's a very American trait. And I, it's whatever. It's a very Jessica trait. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that that's. The government, I don't think the government should be in a position to tell you what to do, especially for two very prime years of life. Right. Yeah. You could. Like 18 I mean, to we 20 could, or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we could probably spend another half an hour arguing about ways to improve that program, but still, right. it's not going to please everybody. Yeah. Yeah. No, no matter what you do. All right. Let me finish on one last question. Jessica, you're yeah. going to get it since you're our new guest. Okay. Uh, do you think that learning more about the person? Can diminish the, the the legacy of their idea. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, so, absolutely. Mar so Martin Luther King uh, was is famously, or maybe infamously, known as sort of a womanizer mm -hmm. that we found out later. That does not mean he's not Martin Luther King, right? Uh, no. Or I Henry Ford, you know, actually went and like visited Hitler in Germany and talked about, and he believed in eugenics and he believed in what Germany was doing. But that doesn't mean we don't build things on an assembly line. Correct. And again, it's a logical fallacy to condemn someone's ideas because of who they are or what they've done outside of that idea. The idea has merit in itself. It does. I, what I will say is... Yeah, nobody's going to be listening to R. Kelly pretty soon. Well, <laughs> we can only hope. Right. Agreed. I, mean, I actually didn't even know who he was. But. Um, I think the thing that w we have to steer away from is I feel like a lot of times it's this binary um, oh, either good guys they, and bad guys. Either they can, yeah. either it's a hundred percent their ideas and the person are amazing. Yeah. Or they're all trash. Sure. And I think that I like think Christopher we, Columbus sort of thing. We have to get away from heroes. Heroes is the biggest yeah. problem we have. Martin Luther King and and his womanizing should be part of, of the, his whole of the curriculum. Absolutely. Of Martin Luther King. Yeah. Um, Dr. Seuss. 
Dr. Seuss had uh, cheated on his first wife. She committed suicide over it. Oh, really? Uh, yep. Uh, he married his, Theodore Geisel. Um, he married his second wife and lived a very long, uh, loving yeah. life with her. But that, and I, and I don't judge, I don't, ju I don't know that situation. I don't judge that. But knowing that history gives me a full, complete picture, a fuller, completer picture of Theodore Geisel than just Dr. Seuss, who, you know, wrote books. Or All right, let me, let me ask, let me, let me, let me ask a follow-up question. That was going to be the last <laughs> question, but that's such a good answer. I want to ask one follow-up question. Okay. What about the fact that, um, learning history and learning our past is a little bit of an onion process mm -hmm. in that when you're in second grade, you don't say Columbus discovered America and, uh, you know, genocide and rape and disease and wiped out a third of the yeah. population yeah. and brought back people to like show off as like, as like, you know, objects and died thinking that he uh, had found India because he, he literally didn't know he had found a new continent on his deathbed. Right. Like, do you, you don't cram all that into a second grader. No, no. but I think, and uh, Jeremy, I will let you answer as well. Um, sorry, I just totally. Well, you're the new person, you. so. Uh, I think that just like, okay, so like when Jeremy said. Can uh, you start off with Columbus discovered America? Yes. And then like by ninth or 10th grade be like, Andy was a I, horrible human being. I man. think you have to tease a little. Okay. So like when Jeremy was reading the story and he talked about doing the research on it, that yeah. was because something piqued his interest, yeah. right? He was like, I want to learn a little bit more. I think you can tell, you know, at, as a mom of a third grader, I think you can tell the Christopher Columbus story and the terrible things that happened with Christopher Columbus and the Native Americans. I don't think that you that's, just start getting that in at like an age appropriate level. Absolutely. You don't have to go into at an age appropriate way. Yeah. Yes. You don't have to go into horrible detail, but you have to give them because here's what happens is they grow up and think you lied to them. Mm. And that's a, a much worse place to be. Whereas instead you were like, remember when I told you about Christopher Columbus and the horrible stuff that happened to the Native Americans because of his arrival? Great. Let's move on to the next, right? And yeah. and that's right. more intriguing to them than Christopher Columbus. Jeremy, you're nodding right? yes. Yeah, I, agree? I would agree. It's the same okay. way. It's There's age-appropriate ways to introduce that information, and it should all be presented. Right from the start. Fashion. So just from the start in an age-appropriate way. Yeah. I think so. That's fair. You know all right. What? And I think it would yeah. be very good for, again, from a hero perspective, that if we were presented all of these people we get from history, every single one of them did right. questionable things. Absolutely. But then doesn't that make uh, studying something like this in the senator's idea, like if it wasn't heroes and villains, mm -hmm. then his idea is no longer lumped in the villain category. Exactly. And, then and it can be judge... discussed in a more rational way. Exactly. Still a bad idea. And Jessica's working in a national park. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. All right. Well, you have, <laughs> we're going to wrap it up there. You've been listening to uh, After Dinner Conversation with myself, Colby, and Jeremy and Jessica. Uh, uh, is, After Dinner Conversation is a series of short stories for long discussions about ethics and morality and all things we've been doing today. We hope that you have the same conversations that we have with your friends. All of these stories can be purchased and reviewed on uh, eBooks at Amazon. You can get these podcasts and all sorts of places that podcasts can go. I think they're everywhere now. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. Please like this. Uh, one, it makes us feel good, uh, but also it gives us uh, the ability to do more of these and to leverage this and to have more exciting topics that we talk about. Uh, it really does help. Uh, and uh, adopt a cat, I adopt guess. Adopt a cat. Adopt a and what's cat. And the, what's the website? Oh, yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, Afterdinnerconversation.com. Okay. Uh, and if you go on Amazon and type in After Dinner Conversation, like a whole array of there's dozens of these books up now. Um, and next week, I forgot, we are talking about As You Wish. Uh, and Jessica, you're going to do our summary. Did you type up a three-paragraph summary <laughs> uh, for next week? Or I you... will for next week. You will for I next will week. I will for next week. All right, yeah, As You Wish is the story of an elderly woman who finds a trunk of tattered stuffed animals and makes a promise to fix them all. It is genuinely a children's story, unlike the one we just did. Yeah. Uh, so join us next uh, next episode. Thank you.